Hello, Jim Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Today, we're going to be talking about the election and Joe Biden. I have some polls and some approval ratings to share with you and a couple of items about Joe Biden. But first about the election, what do you want first, the good news or the bad news? I guess I'll give you the bad news. If you're a Trump supporter, this is the bad news. I should, as I periodically do, oh, you know, before I do that, as I periodically also do, thank new subscribers. I happen to check my channel. I have more subscribers than I thought I had. I thought you get a notice every time you get a new subscriber. Apparently, you don't. So welcome all of you who are subscribing. Now to the bad news, it's I don't know how bad it is because we see a trend that I'm going to get to in a minute and we are still a little ways away from the election. But uh, in Ohio, according to the Rasmussen poll, which is my go to poll, I've mentioned this several times. I'm not going to go through the whole rigmarole as I have done often in the past of why it's my go to poll. Actually, one of two polls. Another one is the Trafalgar poll. And it's for the same reason for both polls, because they have a terrific record for accuracy, even though caveat the Trafalgar group, that's a Republican poll. That's a poll done for Republicans. That said, they are very accurate. They have been accurate. They were one of the only polls, if not the only poll, to correctly call the 2016 election when everybody else had Hillary ahead. The Rasmussen poll, getting to the Rasmussen poll, though, that's the one I want to focus on first. It's Ohio, and it shows Biden leading Trump 49% to 45%, and that would be among likely voters. Those are the voters that Rasmussen polls. So that is a caveat. Oh, and I forgot to do my full disclosure that I was starting to do a moment ago. I'm a conservative, so when I say bad news, it's obviously good news for my liberal friends. So it's not good news for Donald Trump, 49 to 45 in Ohio, which is an important state. I can't remember the last time a Republican won the election without the presidential election without Ohio. But I also can't remember when a president won without Florida. Florida is another must win state. And this is where the news is good or better. But I have to go back to Rasmussen for a second, just to mention that Trump's rating, his approval rating is 50% today. I'm recording this on Tuesday the 8th, and his rating is 50%. The day before it was 51%. The day before that, 52 He's been at 50% or above three days in a row. And I do note that for today, well, you can see it in the chart there that... Trump is a point ahead of where Obama was at this point in his presidency. Trump 50%, Obama was at 49%. Now we go to Florida, where there are two interesting polls. The first one is this Trafalgar group that I was mentioning, and it shows Trump up three points over Biden, 48.7 to 45.6. But equally, or maybe even more important because it's NBC and NBC is a liberal network, they sometimes wait, or I can't say they wait, but well, it's significant that they are showing a tie in Florida. So even the liberal networks, at least this one, is showing a tie in Florida. We'll see what happens. But that is some interesting news that I want to share. See if I got any other interesting news here. Uh, nope, that's it for polls. Now I want to go on to a couple of items about Joe Biden. One of them is something I talked about earlier in an earlier vlog that... Jacob Blake got a visit, or his parents did, his family got a visit from Joe Biden after it was pointed out that Blake's father, Blake Sr., is a virulent anti-Semite and a racist too, but 
on the anti-Semitism, I had asked in an earlier vlog whether, well, I had first asked, was Biden going to visit the father knowing that he's a very strong anti-Semite and racist? It turns out that he did. We know by now that he did. But also I had asked, would Biden at least condemn the father call out his anti-Semitism. So here's the headline. We have the answer. This was actually uh, a couple of days ago. This was last week when this article came out, but I had to talk about other things that I thought were more important. But here's the headline. Biden refuses to criticize Blake's father over anti-Semitic social media posts. The Biden campaign has remained silent on revelations that the father of Jacob Blake, a black man shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin, posted numerous anti-Semitic messages on his social media accounts. Biden met with Jacob Blake's family on Thursday in Kenosha, this was last Thursday, following the police shooting that reignited nationwide protests, rioting, and arson. Multiple anti-Semitic Facebook posts by Jacob Blake Sr. were exposed prior to the meeting. Blake Sr. excoriated the, quote, Jewish media, unquote, and claimed they, quote, control the interest rate and control the media. They control minds and money, unquote. In another post, he wrote, quote, a Jew can't tell me blank period, unquote. In another, he said, quote, the Jewish media picks and chooses who is a terrorist and is not, unquote. During his meeting with the Blake family, Biden reportedly discussed issues of racism and political violence in America. He also spoke by phone with Blake. This would be Blake Jr., the one who was shot, who was still in the hospital following the shooting. So he discussed issues of racism, but did not discuss issues of anti-Semitism. And this was last week, so he still hasn't said anything. To my knowledge, Biden hasn't. The Biden campaign, which has claimed Biden is not afraid to confront anti-Semitism among Democrats and liberals, did not respond to multiple requests for comment from the Washington Free Beacon. That's the news website from which I'm getting this story. And I link to it, by the way. I link to the stories in the description so you can read the whole story. Biden's Jewish outreach director, Aaron Kiek, also did not respond to requests for comment about Blake Sr.'s views. Kayak and Biden have repeatedly leveled charges of anti-Semitism and tolerance of anti-Semitism against President Donald Trump. So I would say that is a pretty prime example of hypocrisy, number one. Number two, I am surprised and disappointed that Biden's Jewish outreach director, Aaron Kiek, is not condemning these comments and apparently still working for the campaign despite Biden's refusal to make any comment about Blake Sr.'s anti-Semitism. It just shows you where the Democratic Party has gone these days, how much it has changed. I really don't understand why so many Jews still support the Democratic Party. I left the Democratic Party a long time ago in 1980. But that's another story. I wanted to end with this final item. It's another example of the deterioration of Joe Biden that the media continues at best not to report, but at worst to actively cover up. It's Joe Biden. He's on tape, on video, answering a question, and he's reading the answer from a teleprompter. It's not from his head it's something that somebody typed on a teleprompter somebody is typing the answers for joe biden and he is reading them the reason we know is because well he's clearly reading in this video that i'm going to show you but he actually says out loud move it closer move it closer meaning the teleprompter it's too far for him to read so he's telling 
the person running the teleprompter to move it closer so he can read the answers that are being typed onto the teleprompter for him. But don't take my word for it. Here's the video. And I would like to know, what will your administration do to help them give them that chance? Thank you. Move it up here. You know, there used to be a basic bargain in this country. Workers shared in the wealth their work helped create. Just the latest example of Joe Biden's deterioration, at least in his mental ability, his mental acuity. It is, I would say, almost a crime. It's a journalistic crime, put it that way, for the liberal media to keep burying this story. It is an outrage. But you know what would not be an outrage and in fact would be a great benefit to me anyways, is if you could give me a thumbs up if you like this video, because that's a video for today. Oh, and thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And again, I appreciate all of you who have subscribed. So again, thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with anybody you think would also like the video. Got any comments? Comment section below the video. You can also ask questions, suggest future topics, and you could subscribe. I love getting subscribers and I appreciate every subscriber I get. But most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.